Hey what's up guys, welcome to the second part of this tutorial so we got through with the third person controls and camera of course they're not completed but we're gonna be polishing them a little bit later on. In the second part we're mainly going to focus on having a spawn system and having our enemies walk from their spawn location to the goal. Alright so in this episode we're going to import a mesh from 3ds max to test out our stuff and also we're going to make a small script that is going to be really useful for our assistance script just off the bat. Alright guys, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I went ahead and I made myself a little something here in 3ds Max. So uh, this is pretty much going to be my test level. So in the center over here is where the core or node or uh, the waypoint where the enemies have to go. And uh, they will be coming from this side and also from these uh, little sides here. So I'll save this somewhere, let's say save as and I have a folder that I'm um, I have a folder outside of my asset folder where I just save all the big files so all the PSD all the .max files once you've saved the 3ds file somewhere on your computer you now want to export the FBX file so go up here export and then we're gonna export this uh, inside the asset folder as you can see I'm inside my asset and then hard work folder and this is going to be my gym mesh now back in the engine you can see that it is now here but it has a slight rotation issue. Since this is our um, gym mesh I'm not going to bother too much with this and I'm just going to drag and drop this on my level. Okay so now that this is imported I like to write a short script before we start with the systems um, for our games. So what I'm going to write actually is going to be a new script and I'm going to declare myself a new folder in here so script create a new folder and this is going to be my managers, or actually systems. System sounds better. And in there, I am going to create myself a new C# -sharp script that I'm going to call Mono Singleton. And this is pretty much a script that you can find um, a lot of places on the web. So in case you don't want to write this, you can simply Google Mono Singleton in in Google, and it's going to give you a page with a uh, decent script. But for this video, I'm simply going to implement a really basic version of that script. So try to follow with me. We have to declare ourselves a public abstract class that is going to take a template here and then we inherit from mono behavior where T inherits from mono singleton T again. So that's a little bit complicated, but you don't have to understand what this does just yet. And then below that, I'm going to declare myself a private static T instance with a, a small letter and then a private, actually no, this one is public, so public static T and this one has a capital letter because it is a property. So below that we say get and if instance does not exist, so if instance is equal equal to null, we are going to declare ourselves a new instance. So instance is equal to new game object and we can give it a name I'll name this type of t dot to string this is only for the name though it doesn't really matter you can give it any kind of string you want and then after that we'll say type of t because we gotta shoot him parameters so we create a new game object and then we add the uh, component type of t and then after that, since we're getting an instance, we're going to say dot get component and we get the t component. Just like this. Okay. Now below that, we are going to say, below the if, we're going to say return instance. Okay, so what this does is whatever we call this function here or this property, it's going to look, okay, do we have an instance? If we don't, we're going to create one and then return that instance. If we have one, just simply give uh, the one we have currently. Now, below that, we're going to declare ourselves a private void, awake. And in the awake, we are going to say if instance is equal to null, and make sure this one has a small letter, not a capital letter. And then we say instance is equal this as t. And now we're only missing one function here, it is the, um, actually this one is public, so public virtual void init, 
and we're simply going to open and close that function here. So we have access to a init call now whenever we want to well, you use any of the scripts that is going to inherit from this one, and we'll have some example a little bit later on, but for now I just want to get this out of the way, so um, come up here and say instance.init, so whenever we create that new object, we also call the initialize, and also we are going to call the initialize in the awake function if it already exists, so init over here. Good. Okay, so in the next episode, using this script we just made, we are going to start coding our spawner. So we're going to have some um, enemies, say, over here, and here, and here, spawning in the map. That's going to be fairly cool. Alright guys, if this was helpful to you, please leave it a like. If you have any question or comment, leave them in the comment section below, and also subscribe for more of these. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.